Okay. That better? Yeah. All right. Great. <laughs> Okay, um, so I'm actually going to repeat some of the things that you said, because <laughs> um, I think a lot of these talks are very similar. Um, I'll come out right out and say in the beginning that imposter syndrome, yeah, it's a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> totally have it too. Everyone's gonna figure me out. <laughs> um, I'm currently an automation and tools engineer at HP, and I work on the OpenStack project. Total fraud there, by the way. <laughs> Um, a little bit about my speaking experience. Um, I, I gave a keynote um, at FOSCON, which is a little open source conference in Philadelphia a couple years ago. Um, I've given a, I gave a talk at OSCON uh, this past year. Um, and then I, uh, I speak at scale pretty regularly. This is one of the talks I did. That's the Southern California Linux Expo. Um, I'm giving two talks again this year, uh, next month. Um, I also um, so often speak at universities and schools. Um, I'm particularly proud of this because I never went to school. I mean, I went to high school and I finished that, but I never went to university. So it's really funny for me when I get to go talk at them. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a little bit about myself. Um, last year I counted up, um, I did 10 talks around lots of different conferences and things last year. And with this conference and scale next month, I will already have hit five by the end of February. So. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> this is my second talk of this conference. I'm doing one tomorrow, too. So I do a lot of speaking. Um, and if you had told this to my high school self, I would have just laughed at you because I'm really shy. And my website is princessleia.com, so I'm kind of a nerd. <laughs> and I have like, like all the stories of like teenage nerdiness. <laughs> I have all those stories. So I, I was shy and I you know, was not um, liking the whole public speaking thing. So. I wanted to go through a few myths um, that, that were busted as I went through my public speaking adventure. Um, I guess I'd started doing public speaking probably about six years ago. And my first talks were really bad. Um, I was really scared and I never practiced. I wrote my slides. I wrote, I wrote really great slides. But I wouldn't practice because I didn't really understand that that was a thing you're supposed to do. <laughs> um, plus it's funny, like I'm going to present to my cats, right? <laughs> um, so there's all these myths floating around in my head about public speaking. So my first talks weren't very good. And I had this fear that the audience wouldn't like me, which is a very strange um, fear, I think. Um, when you walk into a talk, you sort of assume that the person standing in the front of the room is an expert. Um, presumably, they were selected by a panel of conference people or you know, lug admins or something. Um, some person who thinks that they have expertise. Um, I can't think of a time when I've gone into a talk and thought the person didn't know what they were talking about. <laughs> Um, so you have to understand, so first I had to understand that, you know, when I go into a talk, do I assume people are stupid? No, I assume the person knows what they're talking about. Um, also when people walk into talks, they generally do it because they want to learn something. Um, if they're there to heckle, then they're not actually your audience. Um, they're a bad person and you don't want to pay attention to what they think. <laughs> uh, most people want to learn, they are on your side, and more importantly, when I started learning how to speak, sometimes I'd tell the audience that I was new to speaking. And that gets a lot of sympathy. Um, a lot of people who are in the audience have never given a talk before, um, so they understand how scary it can be, or maybe they don't understand, but they, they imagine how scary it can be. Um, so they'll, they'll have sympathy for um, you taking the risk of going up there and making yourself vulnerable in front of a room full of people. I've also done a few things um, to try to sort of humanize myself in front of the audience. Um, I, was at a, I was at a talk um, several months ago, and it was, a, it was a talk about OpenStack for code chicks. So the audience had lots of women in it, and I was so excited. So I took a picture of the audience. <laughs> and that instantly like, made it all much more friendly feeling, because now I'm a person who's tweet. I'm like, I'm totally tweeting this. <laughs> so it's sort of doing humanizing things. Um, you get a lot of sympathy from the audience. And plus, like, the guy who stands up and talks about himself for 10 minutes, no one likes that commenter. So <laughs> you get sympathy when you get bad commenters, too, in your talk. So, they are not, they only, not only like you, but they are on your side from the beginning. Another one, you have to know everything. It turns out that's not possible because I tried and you can't. Um, I, I also, like Karen, I had this fear that like, I'd give a talk and at the end there would be a question I wouldn't know how to answer. And that would invalidate everything I said, like the whole talk. <laughs> um, and then they'd all find out that I didn't know what I was talking about. Um, and then I, I started 
I started thinking about this, and I was like, you know, have I ever been bothered by a speaker saying I don't know to a question? No, like, because you don't know everything, and speakers are not people who know everything either. <laughs> um, and so I started saying things like, you know, I, I would say I don't know, or you know, I know who to ask, um, or email me later and we can find out the answer together, because I still wasn't strictly okay with saying I don't know. But it turns out it really is just okay to say I don't know. That's the end, next question. Um, but this stopped me from talking and giving talks for a long time because I was really afraid of this. Um, so don't let that happen to you. <laughs> and this is one of my favorites. Um, good speakers don't need to practice. So I mentioned that I didn't really practice early on because I didn't really understand that that was a thing. And I'd go to all these Linux conferences and these guys would be around, because it was mostly guys, and they'd be like, oh, I haven't even written my slides yet, and they'd be bragging about all that, and I'd be like, well, <laughs> so you don't need to practice, because obviously if you're writing the slides the night before, you're not practicing. <laughs> um, so it took me until I read this book, um, Confessions of a Public Speaker. Um, I forget the author, but it's very, very good. And this guy who wrote, wrote it, he's a former tech guy, and he does public speaking for a living now. Um, so the book is all about sort of myths that he learned along the way. Um, and one of them was about practicing. And he said it was something like um, he practices eight times as much as the talk is. So, you know, for an hour-long talk, he practices for eight hours. And that was sort of revolutionary to me because I didn't really understand that that was a thing. And then understanding that not only is it a thing, but even professional public speakers are doing this thing. <laughs> Um, made me realize that maybe I should start practicing. And then once I started practicing, I became a much better speaker. Um, there's lots of things you learn when you practice um, about the flow of your slides. Every single time I do a slide deck, it's not right when I first do it. You have to practice it, and then you change the wording around, you fix up the flow. Um, also things like introducing yourself, I was so bad at that. <laughs> like I know what I want to say, but if I don't practice what I'm going to say, I say just crazy things. <laughs> or things that like, don't make sense, or I skip over important things, like that I have a job. <laughs> um, so yeah, this, is, this was a bit huge one for me, um, learning that you actually do need to practice. And people do have their own styles. Anita was up here giving a talk earlier, and she's amazing. Like, she never practices, I don't think. She's, <laughs> she just writes her slides like five minutes before the talk and gets up there and is amazing. Um, so some people really don't, but most people do, and that's okay. Yep. Oh, good speakers don't get nervous. Yeah, that's a total lie. I get nervous every time. <laughs> um, it was, it was especially, it's, it's especially frustrating because I'd get nervous and then I'd get nervous about being nervous because obviously if I was a good speaker then I wouldn't get nervous. And then it was just this whole, like, <laughs> it was really bad. <laughs> um, so once, so actually I learned that in that, that Confessions of a Public Speaker book as well, um, that it's okay to get nervous and the key is just understanding that you're going to be nervous and just handling it. Like, take deep breaths, have a drink. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, do whatever you can just to relax and slow down. Um, I also had to learn some things. I actually started watching videos of myself giving talks, which is the most horrible thing. Um, but I learned that I, I laugh when I'm nervous. And also, when I, when I get like confused or don't know what to say next, it feels like forever if you stop. Like, collecting yourself. But if you watch a video of yourself, when you thought it was like five minutes you paused for, it was really like a second. Um, so I had to learn things like um, learning how to pause instead of laughing. I still laugh sometimes. But, <laughs> um, but just like sort of nervous tics that you learn from, from watching your um, videos, as, as horrible and hard as it is. <laughs> but yeah, we all get nervous. I don't think I'll ever stop getting nervous about giving talks. This is another good one. Um, shy people make poor speakers. No, that's not true at all. Um, you may have seen me hiding over in the corner there for all afternoon. I'm very shy. <laughs> um, and anyone can talk to me later. I'm not antisocial. I just, I'm really awkward. <laughs> um, so I, public speaking was really scary for me because I'm shy. But it turns out sort of my version of shyness is because I don't 
know how to act in a certain social situation. Like, I don't know how to go and say hi to someone, because I'm like, what if, I, don't, I have crazy things in my head. <laughs> it's just, I, I have trouble. Um, but it turns out, um, in a public speaking situation, I know what my role is, I know what I'm supposed to be doing, and that makes it so much easier um, for me to um, you know, talk to people. Um, because I know exactly what the protocol is, and I know what's expected of me, and it's all pretty simple in my head. Um, also, when I speak at conferences, people talk to me. Um, first, they don't think I'm someone's girlfriend, because I got the speaker badge. <laughs> um, and two, like, yeah, they have something to talk to me about. They'll come up to me after my talk, or um, if they ask a question, I can approach them later, and I have something to say. Like, I know how to say, like, hey, that was a great question, I want to talk to you more about, you know, whatever. Um, so I found that I enjoy conferences more when I'm speaking, um, just because I don't feel, like I feel like I belong there and I feel like I have something to talk to people about. Um, there's a funny story about this. I was giving a talk on doing open source for your career um, at a conference in October. And I, I mentioned this whole like shyness thing and going to conferences and stuff. And afterwards this one guy came up to me and he's like, I don't even go to conferences where I'm not speaking anymore. <laughs> Same exact reason. He's like, I'm shy, and I don't like going to conferences where I don't know anyone, and I'm not speaking. So it was, it was interesting to learn that I'm not the only one here. Um, so if you're shy, like, it's better to speak. <laughs> uh, your talk must be ori completely original. That's another myth, and that one is one that stopped me from talking for a while, because I didn't have something completely original. Or the thing I had to talk about wasn't completely original enough to meet my ridiculous standards of originalness. <laughs> um, there, it turns out there's a lot of conferences, and even Linux users groups and other things that have beginner's tracks, or um, are interested in just like, you worked on something for three months, come talk to us about it. Um, you don't need to be an expert. Um, it doesn't need to be something you are, you know, you know everything about, again. <laughs> It can just be something interesting that you were working on. Um, and everyone in the audience, maybe they didn't have time to spend three months on it, but it's something interesting to you and something interesting to the audience. Um, so it definitely doesn't need to be original. Um, I also did some small talks um, about configuring Apache early on, and that's something I was like, I can't do a talk on this because it's so easy and everyone can do it. And <laughs> um, there's a thousand YouTube videos about it. Um, but that's, that doesn't matter. There's beginner's tracks and there's places to give these talks and they are valuable to people even if you might think they're too easy or they're not at all original. Um, so that, yeah, and I, I gave an OpenStack workshop for a bunch of people recently and I actually just downloaded someone else's slides because it was so unoriginal that I didn't even need to make slides. <laughs> but it was super valuable. It was a, it was a really great, great, great um, afternoon. Um, and, and a, a little bit on, on this original thing, you can also give the same talk multiple times, which is so awesome. I just learned this. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like such a, a fraud. <laughs> like go to all these conferences and give the same talk, which is great because you already have sort of that practice built in and you just need to polish it up a few days before. Um, and I, I get great responses every single time I give this same talk over and over again. Not this one. But actually, the one I'm giving tomorrow. <laughs> um, so yeah, it can be unoriginal and you can do it over and over again. Um, and I, I went very fast. <laughs> um, there's lots of other excuses not to give talks. Um, one of my favorite ones of my own is that at some point in my trying to get myself to go give talks, I got the idea that I had to go to Toastmasters first. Um, Toastmasters is an international group that has clubs all over the place um, where people sort of get up and give speak, do speaking, and then the audience sort of gives them um, critical, uh, uh, constructive criticism of what their talk is to help them improve and be better speakers. So I thought, well, I can't give a talk until I go to Toastmasters. So I was living in sort of Pennsylvania in not really close to a city at the time, and there weren't many groups around for Toastmasters, and then I found one, and then I couldn't, and then I missed that one, and then I couldn't go to another one because I was busy. And then there was one I could go to, but then I totally chickened out. And this is over the course of like a year, right? Like, I'm totally gonna go to Toastmasters someday, and that will solve all my speaking worries. <laughs> um, but at a certain point, I realized that I was totally using that as an excuse. <laughs> um, 
And I, I shouldn't have been doing that. <laughs> I mean, Toastmasters is great, and people should go to it because they're a great organization. Um, but don't use things like that as an excuse, because um, it doesn't really help, and it won't get you out there and speaking. And actually, that was all I had. I think I only thought it was 20 minutes. <laughs> yes, well, it's sort of then 20 minutes of speaking slots, but there's room for changeover and questions. And cool. <laughs> something I'll be like okay what is the worst thing that could happen like being grilled by the Israelis or something you know like <laughs> what is the worst thing that could happen and of course I go like then I'll get fired from my job <laughs> like no really like yeah it could be embarrassing or like off-putting uh, I also noticed that some audiences are much different so that was obviously like an audience that was more like um, sort of in your face sort of grilling type yeah. um, but I also noticed um, I live in San Francisco, and the Silicon Valley Linux Users Group, they are brutal sometimes. Like, you just get certain people in the audience who really want to talk about themselves, and they're not there really to talk, you know, have the talk, listen to the talk. Um, and they can be a really hostile audience, um, which is a complete opposite to what I've experienced here. Um, and someone told me that before they got there. They're like, oh, LCA, I love that conference. <laughs> Everyone's so nice, and audiences are great. <laughs> Um, so it definitely depends on the audience, too. And I, I've sort of had to train myself to just be like, you know, if there's that one person who's being terrible in the audience, like, like they're the one. I don't have to worry about them. Most people, I think, are going to be OK and nice. <laughs> so, yeah. I think sometimes the best talks to prepare for where you really need to prepare are at least 19, 19, 19, because they are just five minutes or six minutes and 20 seconds. And you have the time slide, so you really need to make sure to get the timing right, and that's what you really, really need to practice. Yeah. Well, it all takes five minutes to practice. <laughs> well, <laughs> ten times. <laughs> yeah, right. At least ten times. <laughs> And, and so, you know, the, the dinosaur falling out of the, the sky would be right up top of the ladder. <laughs> and uh, I might slip over and hit my head with fairly further, you know, down the other end. And so, yeah, it actually made them try to uh, sort of apply this realistic thinking to, the, to these, these amazing fears that they had. So, yeah, right, and I actually, I mean, it's, it's a kid's 
system, right? But I absolutely use exactly the same system myself. <laughs> so, you know, oh my god, what is the worst possible thing that could happen? And how actually likely is that that's going to be? Yeah. yeah. And like I said, even when the worst possible thing does happen, it's actually not even as bad as you thought it would be. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I would like to add this in more to you guys. I, I was thinking about it at one stage I was giving my presentation. I was thinking what the worst can happen in the school is like that. Mm -hmm. I will not be able to pull myself back. And this happened. Mm -hmm. And then I said, Ooh, this was really bad. And that shattered me at all. And then this happened again in the very next. Wow. And that destroyed my self confidence at that stage. And what the hell was that? I used to speak and work on that. And suddenly it starts happening. And it was a complete blackout. Like everyone was looking at me and I couldn't pull back. It was so. So for that the key is practice and practice with your peers and your friends and not basics. Even though I practice that through talks like ten number of times in a closed room in front of the mirror or whatever. But still it was completed. So hopefully that never happens. As you said, practice is the key. The more you speak, it happens five times or six times or one day. Yeah, maybe it's just a part of my language. English is not my mother tongue. So the should could may sometimes could go at the wrong places. Actually, it's a future. Say sorry. The fact that English is my not my mother tongue. Yeah, it's a future. It's not the time. So you can say whatever you want. At okay. least for me, that's yeah, like that's a good language. So. <laughs> but you know, that's yeah. fine. You can say that. But yeah. sometimes, as we were saying, it was not making any sense to the audience at the time. So those kind of things can sometimes just call you so <laughs> That's my two cents. <laughs> just a question like, when you do your speech and you notice like, someone is leaving, do you get distracted or nervous about this? No, and, I, I, I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. And for example, when you talk to people are just using their computers or does um, when you do your speech, do you make like an eye contact with someone or you just like a bad view or I, I how try, it works? I try just a few. Like, like, mm. you know, huh? mm. No, sorry, yeah. Oh yeah, like people would look like they're engaged or not engaged. <laughs> well, they are now. <laughs> um, and I, I don't really get bothered by people leaving. Um, I, I mean, if there was like like mass accidents from the room, <laughs> I might get bothered, but that's never happened. That's one of the worst things that can happen. Is everyone just leaves. <laughs> or no one's there. <laughs> well, that's actually not so bad. <laughs> I, I, I've, I've done one or two talks where I've stood up crap, there's like two people in there, and yeah. it's like, great, this feels very informal now, and the fact that I actually have slides here seems kind of ridiculous. I was, I was scheduled against a keynote once. My talk was the only one that was at the same time as the keynote. And there weren't very many people there. But then, so I was, I was just like, oh man. So some of my friends was like there with me. She's like, this means that everyone here really wants to go to your talk. They're skipping the keynote for you. And I was like, okay, that's a much better. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, they need workshop. So they could, yeah, like everyone come yeah. closer. Let's yeah, talk. and you can make it so much more informal and it's a lot more fun. Yeah. I, got, I got scheduled up against beta. And like, <laughs> and it's like, hmm, rockets or documentation? Oh. <laughs> you should have combined it had documentation. Rockumentation. <laughs> I wish I thought of that. 